I'd just like to take a minute to truly appreciate the return of meaningful baseball. The turning of the season as the smell of the grass and broken in leather once again permeates fields across the country from major league stadiums to small dusty lots. Once again the crack of the bat will reverberate and teammates will shout aloud in both joy and despair. You know that winter is ending because another season of baseball is here to help us while away lazy summer afternoons. And once more, the Astros take the field in search of glory. Let's watch it together. Spring training bias Astros The Astros loop back to northern Florida after spending most of spring training there and ending their exhibition games at a healthy 18-12 record. There weren't a whole lot of surprises for the team this past month as a majority of the roster was set for the regular season. Even so, there were some question marks that were put to bed when Peacock was announced as the fifth starter and Framber Valdez was named his replacement in the pen. Of the regular bats who were in the lineup for this spring, Alex Bregman probably had the best performance at the plate to the surprise of absolutely no one, slashing .348.488.677. To surprise of some Tony Kemp was not too far behind with a 1.040 WAPS and a team high 10 walks. Newly minted backstop Robinson Chirinos joined both of them as the only other Astro with an ops over 1.000. Gariel, Mariznik, and Correa all came close to joining them at the millennium mark though. Yuli in particular had a robust batting average this past month, hitting at .372 while mashing five doubles and a homer. Meanwhile, Jake had himself a fine spring as well, sending three homers out of the park to go with six walks while Correa got on base at a .381 clip. The rest of the regulars mostly had a somewhat pedestrian street with Springer turning in one of the better performances, but not by much in comparison to Redick and Altuve. In comparison to the other players, Tyler White had a pretty down spring while the newly acquired Aledmus Diaz did not impress, turning in a rather paltry .453 ops. Meanwhile, the bullpen turned in decent enough performance this past March though Roberto Osuna was easily the best pitcher working in relief. Appearing almost exclusively in one-inning spurts, Osuna held a 0.00 error and 6 Ks and only 2 hits across 6.1 innings of work. Presley was the next best, only surrendering a single run across 5 IP to go with a fancy 8 strikeouts. After that, Josh James turned in the best performance of any of the relievers. Even with his streak shortened due to injury, he still managed 4.1 innings and only surrendered a single run, but did give up 6 hits. Things get a little ugly from there for the relievers, with no one sporting an era under 5.00. Devo managed to turn his spring around after a pretty rocky star though, giving up all four of his earned runs in his first 0.1 innings of work before sharpening up. Indeed, it seems that most of the relievers would start off slow before finding themselves and have relatively good springs. Except for Framber Valdez, who stumbled in his final appearance, giving up fiver in just 1.2 innings. Now that spring is out of the way, the Astros will try and continue the success, get off to a quick pace, and hopefully beat up on the somewhat improved Rays in their home stadium. Rays The Rays returned to Florida after a spring that was something of a mirror image compared to the Astros. They only managed to turn in a 13-17 record, landing only three spots from the bottom of the pile in Grapefruit League play. The Rays' most dangerous hitters this March were topped by second baseman Brandon Lowe with a BB.377, .411, slash line for the exhibition matches. G-Man Choi, who was traded over from Milwaukee last season, will start the season at first after winning the position thanks to an impressive offensive performance of his own. In spite of the poor record, a good number of the Rays' players had pretty decent offensive springs. As a team, the Rays pumped out a bunch of homers with catcher Mike Zunino leading the MLB players with four long balls even though he was on the lower end of the offensive spectrum.
Tommy Pham, Austin Meadows, and Avisail Garcia all turned in an ops north of .900, making for a potent trio of outfielders during March. Though there was mostly good news for the Rays, shortstop Willie Adames turned in a pretty weak performance, only managing a .603 ops while striking out 17 times in 45 abs. Of course, the Rays' strategy lies mostly in their bullpen, where they will once again look to employ the opener strategy. Only carrying three full-time starters, expect to see Ryan Stanek, Diego Castillo, and possibly Wilmer Font making some starts for the team this year. As a result, Tampa's pen is a little heavy with nine relievers ready to go. The three Stanek has the most experience in the opener position, doing it for 29 games in 2018, but he also had a rather suspect spring, surrendering five runs across 9.1 IP. Castillo was slightly better with just four runs surrendered in just 8.1 innings while Font's performance is probably better left unmentioned. Beyond that, Ryan Yarbrough probably had the best outings of all the relievers, turning in a 3.24 era and 8.1 IP in 12 strikeouts. No one else sported an era better than 5.00 out of the pen, but one thing that Tampa's relievers did do well was go multiple innings, usually stretching for at least two in most performances. The Rays are ready to compete for the East based off a late season surge in 2018, and will look to get off on the right foot while opening at home against a pretty big test. Of course, I feel it necessary to mention that I'd only talk about spring training since it's the most recent accumulation of stats. But as everyone knows, those numbers mean nothing once the games mean something. Pitching matchups Game 1, Justin Verlander, RHP, 0-0, ERA vs. Blake Snell, LHP, 0-0, ERA Verlander will make his 11th opening day start, tying the MLB record, after everything seemed to be ramping up for him in his final start of Saint. He would strike out 9 batters across 5 scoreless innings against the Marlins in that game while capping off what has been a pretty fantastic spring for him. Proving himself the perennial workhorse ace, his 2.40 era and 17.1 innings were among the best showings in the Astros' rotation, while his 25 strikeouts blew the closest of 15 away. That was Miley and Cole, by the way, opposing him will be Blake Snell, who will be making the first opening day start of his career. Snell would finish his streak with a 0.00 official era, but that comes after only three innings. The rest of his time prepping would be on minor league fields and in exhibition games against college players. He also started slow thanks to an illness that at the end of February. There is a some question as to whether he's ready to face MLB level hitting, but the Astros would be foolish to discount the 2018 Al Cy Young winner. In a battle like this I'll have to take my favorite player player and say that Verlander edges Snell and Houston make a statement to open the 2019 season. Game 2, Jared Cole, RHP, 0-0, Eric vs. Charlie Morton asterisk, RHP, 0-0. Eric, while his era may be slightly higher than Verlander's first street, Cole arguable had the better spring. Though his last time out he didn't exactly shine while giving up three runs in 5.1 innings to the Nats, he would finish exhibition games with a minuscule .179 BA and an elite 0.81 whip in 16 innings of work. As he enters a contract year, expect Cole to light a fire under himself and look to perform at a high level this season. Meanwhile, he'll face off against literal and metaphorical old friend Charlie Morton, who signed with the Rays over the 2018 offseason. Morton has had an excellent spring training himself, serving up a 1.69 era across 10.2 innings while striking out 10 in that time. Though is it fair to point out that there were four unearned runs mixed in there. Still, a .184 average and 0.94 whip are nothing to sneeze at as he prepares to face off against his former team and possibly deliver a little revenge for letting him go. As much as I love me some CFM, and will always root for him against other teams, I don't see him being better than Cole here.
Game 3, Colin McHugh, RHP, 0-0, ERA vs. Tyler Glass now asterisk, 0-0, ERA Colin McHugh's spring has been not great. Hampered by back stiffness he's only started 3 games and would get lit up for 10 runs on 12 hits across just 5.2 IP. He would only manage 3 strikeouts in that time while allowing a .429 opponent's batting average and a monster 2.47 whip. While you certainly can't take spring training numbers to heart, something has seemed off about McHugh this past month that he can hopefully shake off as he heads into his first start of 2019. Tyler Glass now will come into this season after a better streak than McHugh, but not by much. He would give up 15 runs across 13 innings while walking 8. He did manage a shiny 16 Ks in that time frame though, but 8 walks and a 2.00 whip seems to suggest that he has trouble keeping that going consistently. The Rays will need him to step up and live up to his ceiling if they hope to contend in a top-heavy at least. Both pitchers here have had pretty awful springs so I'm going to call this one a toss-up depending on who can best find their form in this game. Asterisk the pitchers for the race in both Game 2 and Game 3 are still listed as TBD on the official site, but these are the most likely candidates if they go with an actual starter. Game 4, Wade Miley, LHP, 0-0, ERA vs. TBD Miley makes this start after a spring that he can feel pretty good about, going 15 innings across 4 starts with a rotation best 2.40 era. Did give up a good number of hits, but managed to limit damage and get timely strikeouts when needed. He'll look to continue the success he had with the Brewers in 2018 and prove himself to his new team as the Astros seek another World Series berth. Houston will most likely face one of the Rays openers, my money is on Stanek, who I covered up in the recency buys section. I'm gonna have to go with Miley over the Rays bullpen, which didn't exactly look like a well-oiled machine during Street. Fun fact today marks just the third and fourth time that a Cy Young winner and runner-up have matched up to start the season as Verlander and Snell will face each other while Degram and Scherzer tow this lab in Washington. The first and second time both happened was on the same day 40 years ago in 1979. All winner Ron Guidry of the Yankees faced off against Mike Caldwell from the Brewers while NL winner Gaylord Perry of the Padres matched up against the Dodgers' Bert Hooten. For your viewing and listening pleasure Game 1, Thursday, March 28 at 3 p.m. CDT Listen, Astros, KBME 790, Rays, WDAE 620 AM, 95.3 FM, WGES 680 Watch, Astros, at Sportsnet SW, Rays, Fox Sports Sun Game 2, Friday, March 29 at 6 10 p.m. CDT Listen, Astros, KBME 790, Rays, WDAE 620 AM, 95.3 FM, WGES 6 180 watch Astros at Sportsnet SW Rays Fox Sports Sun Game 3 Saturday March 30th at 5 10 p.m. CDT Listen Astros KBME 790 Rays WDAE 620 AM 95.3 FM WGES 680 WLCC 760 watch Astros at Sportsnet SW Rays Fox Sports Sun Game 4 Sunday March 31st at 12 10 p.m. CDT Listen Astros KBME 790 Rays WDAE 620 AM 95.3 FM WLCC 760 Watch Astros at Sportsnet SW Rays Fox Sports Sun